Hi there, listeners. I know we said that our previous episode was going to be our last on Watson's Trending Globally channel, but turns out that's not actually the case. We will be transitioning to a new podcast feed this fall, though. We'll keep you posted when that happens. In the meantime, welcome to a special summer edition of The Mark and Carrie Show. There's so much to talk about. And we're I like so, that we're, why are we here? Well, actually, here's the first one. Why yeah. are we here? Why are we so lame that we're able to do this? Uh, because we, there's just we can't wait till the fall. We're so excited to to, to talk about world and global events. Yeah, I just no. more to do with the fact that I've just got too much work to do and I can't get to go anywhere. Oh, and okay, you? so no motivation. I well, I work during the summer. I yeah, have to exactly. be in my office during the summer. Yeah. Um. So, well, I want as you know, the world turns. Um, <laughs> yeah, it certainly does. <laughs> Where do you want to start? What are we going to do uh, with? You. I know. I'm Bo- rusty. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Get back in the swing here. Uh, yeah. Boris Johnson. Well, welcome to the world of, well, um, well, yeah, oh, yeah, he's Boris. of leaders with outstanding hair. Exactly. He is. He, I love the fact that Trump said he was Britain Trump. He didn't even <laughs> use like the, the possessive. Yeah. Britain's Trump. Yeah. Britain Trump. Yeah. yeah. So maybe that'll stick. So what do you want to know? I mean, he went and talked to the Queen this afternoon or like a few hours ago. That must have been great. That must have been the two poshest accents in human history getting together in the one room. I mean, I don't want to start off on this kind of footing, but I just to say, I mean, her first prime minister is Winston Ch- Churchill, right? And now she's to Boris Johnson, so yes. it's just an it starts. It's just contrast. decline. No, it's yeah. just it's just yeah. basically decline from 1945. It's a bit like yeah. the country itself, actually. Um, so lots to say about him. I mean, poor Theresa May out and Boris Johnson in. You know those quotes that he said. You know, there's a better chance of him getting hit by a champagne cork than ever becoming prime minister. And now here he is. Well, he could, he's, pro- he's probably the only guy I know that could open a champagne bottle and impale himself <laughs> yes, in the yes, eye. Was impale you know, with yeah. a, with a probability of 0. Yeah. 0.9. Um, all right. So what is there seriously to say about Bo- about Boris? Um, so he was on Top Gear once. Mm-hmm. And Clarkson said to him, you know, most people, as I paraphrase, right? Um, most people have a kind of a sheen of competence that they wear. <laughs> and if you scratch beneath it, you find out they're complete Muppets. Uh, you behave like a complete Muppet, but you actually seem to be quite competent. To which Boris, to his credit, said, no, no, it's 100% Muppet. Oh, honestly, it really is. So if you talk to people who know him, they actually all agree that he's actually really, really smart. Oh, right. so he's deflecting. But, yeah, but he is also, he loves to play the buffoon and all the rest uh-huh. of it, right? And, you know, it's part of the charm, et cetera, yeah. right? But there is also part of him which is astonishingly egotistical. Uh, and yeah. you see this in his rise to power, right? He didn't give a damn about Brexit. Mm-hmm. He jumped on the bandwagon because he thought it'd be good for the brand. Mm-hmm. And the whole thing about 350 million quid going to the NHS, the National Health Service, yeah. if you leave, et cetera, it was a flat out lie. Uh-huh. And he willingly associated himself and, and promulgated that lie. So, you know, I would trust him literally as far as I could throw him mm-hmm. after six months of working out intensively. Um, <laughs> does this mean anything drastically changes in British? politics well he said you know it's halloween come higher high water hell, hell yes, high water yeah. for brexit and i think that he's serious about that i also as you know have been continually saying that we're going to get a hard brexit no yeah. in britain seems to believe this but i think they're all just in denial uh-huh. um i think that I, I did a twitter thing um yesterday when it was announced and i basically said here's the next 12 months so we'll see if it's right uh boris comes in king boris of brexit land uh-huh. <laughs> he That's goes great. for a hard brexit uh, he knows there'll be a shock to the pound. He compensates by doing massive tax cuts. This blows out the deficit, but guilt, government bonds barely move because that's the way markets are behaving just now. They just don't care. Uh, that cushions some of the Brexit shock, and all of that will be balanced with another round of swinging austerity cuts to local government budgets probably oh. in about two years' time, uh, all to the greater good of Boris. Now, what could derail this? Mm-hmm. Well, it looks like the Labour Party is really beginning to come apart over mm-hmm. Corbyn's inability to have a, a, an actual positive stance on Brexit. Mm-hmm. And again, as I've maintained before, that's because his stance is he doesn't really care about winning the election. He wants to destroy the Conservative Party. Right. So it's a question of which outcome prevails, right? If you get a hard Brexit, does that benefit Boris or does it blow up the Tories? Hmm. Does that benefit Labour, even if it blows up the current Corbyn configuration mm-hmm. of Labour? It's all coming to a head at Halloween. 
from this side of things and this side of the ocean, it feels like there's more confidence in Johnson navigating the Brexit waters than there was with Theresa May. And is yeah. that, or is it just there's a new person and a new someone to project your feelings onto? Well, there's certainly part of that, but ultimately all these choices are down to what the EU will give you. Yeah. So, you know, for all of Theresa May's sort of, you know, terrible hand wringing and bad presentation skills and all the rest of it, you know, she did actually work out a deal. Mm -hmm. Now, any deal that you get is going to be worse than the one you already have, but you've voted that one down. Yeah. And now you've voted that other one down five times. So, you know, Boris might be a brilliant spin meister, but it's going to be really hard to say, right, here's what we're going to do. The same thing that you voted five times. I've got some cosmetic changes right. and uh, maybe with a bit of smoke and mirrors and a couple of quotes about Carthage, we'll get through <laughs> this. Uh, I'm skeptical. Yeah. Well, and it seems like the MPs would easily suss that out, that it's just cosmetic. And that's right. Insane. And, you know, it depends on how serious the European Research Group, in other words, the hardline Brexiters really uh, want to okay. push it, blah, blah, blah. Okay. But anyway, my money's still on a hard Brexit. Okay, it's on just Halloween. Gonna it's just too it's too yeah. good historically, right? It really has to be the hardest of Brexits yeah. on Halloween. It's just, you know, yeah. saw two, that sort of stuff. Well, I feel like there's a good um sort of harbinger in that the uh the wor workers, the baggage handlers at Heathrow are striking right now. It's supposed to, I think it's supposed to end. But I just, and I was just joking around my my uh partner who told me and I said, Is this in you know, because of Boris? And of course it was not, but it's just, you know, all of these things happening all well, at I'll once. Well I'll tell you who is just livid but also delighted with Boris are the Scots. Oh, yeah. Because if you were to do a car, if you were to say to Scottish people, can you draw me a cartoon of an insensitive upper class Tory <laughs> yeah. who would wind up a Scottish person? It would literally be a portrait of Boris Johnson. Yeah. So, you know, they want Indie Ref too. Yeah. It's yeah. well on course for like two years from now, definitely. Is his hair real? It's the Trump it's like question. Trump hair, you know, yeah. it's okay. Trump hair. Speaking okay. of Trump, Carrie, yeah. something that I've been meaning to say for to you for a while yes, yeah. is, uh, <laughs> why don't you go back uh, where you came from? Well, so I am actually headed back there to oh, really? Michigan because nice. my niece to is Michigan. getting married. That's yeah. great, absolutely. In, yeah. in a couple of weeks, so I'm really so, excited. So, of to course, see what family. was I referring to, though? Yes, no, thank you. Um, so uh, it's hard to know what to say about this because there's so many and yet so little, so few things to say about this. But of course, this is about the president's tweets uh, to the four congresswomen about the going, squad. yes, going back to where they came from. And what's interesting is reading the, you know, the uh, hot and heavy reporting from the Washington Post and New York Times is that he seemingly didn't know what nerve he was touching as he tweeted that stuff out at six thirty in the morning. Oh, you got to be kidding me! Look, if you go to the big book of racist yeah. insults halfway down page one is why don't you go back where you came yes. from I mean come on it's seriously? not that far into the volume no really yeah. it's not no. it's like preface yeah. and then yes. second paragraph yeah. if not first yeah so, I mean, if we believe that reporting, he didn't, and they, and his advisors, of course, are scrambling to sort out how to, and no one wanted to deal with it. They didn't know what to say. Um, do you ever, have you ever gotten that? Go back to where you came from. Oh, actually, I have, but it's kind of funny as, as a sort of like white bloke, right? Yeah. I get this for being sort of, you know, sometimes a, a, seemingly a bit lefty in oh, my politics, right? Crazy. And so people who disagree with that say, well, if you don't like it here, why don't you go back to where you came from? Yeah. And what they refer to there isn't a sort of an ethnic claim or a nationalist or a racist claim. It's a political claim, right? You know, if you want Scandinavia, why don't you go back there? Yeah. And I go, well, because I'm from Scotland. But nonetheless, <laughs> it's a very different cadence of a different use yes. of that. And, it, and yeah. it said in a very different way from the way it was said there. Yeah. But I mean, do you really buy that Trump didn't know what he's doing? I mean, isn't this a brilliantly effective strategy know, for demonizing the Democrats? What I was thinking too is that, I mean, a couple of things. Yes, demonizing the Democrats. And he doesn't, I mean, no one's excited from the Republican base about Joe Biden versus Donald Trump. Like, it's like a snooze fest. But what his base does get excited about is putting the face of the Democratic Party as those four, like, radical, you know, the term radical liberal women and I think in that way, it is a really brilliant electoral strategy to get them really excited because we the economy is doing really well right now. Employment, I guess I don't care whether I have a job or not. And tariffs, like I don't understand that. But the thing that I do care about are these like four women that are just rabble rousers and stirring the pot. And that gets me excited to go to the voting booth and vote for Trump. So in that way, I think, you know, all the racist tropes they can use, it does get his base excited. I yeah, mean. I mean, you know, so the, the, the most resonant issue seems to be immigration with yeah. a large part of the base. Um, so you got women who are friendly to immigrants who look like immigrants yes. who are women who are politically on the left. Yes. I mean, yeah. if you want the poster children of Republican opposition, 
It's right there. Well, in an election that's going to be a choice, it's going to be Donald Trump not running on his record. But here's here's I'm not going to get look at the Democrats. They're going to give stuff to all these people that don't deserve it. And so you want to vote for me. That's exactly what he wants to be illustrating to them and really campaigning on as uh, as well. So I think it's one of those crazy like a fox. Do you think do you think it's going to work? Yeah, I mean, 13 seconds of send her back. I mean, it's only, I mean, if it were a year from now, it would be even better for him. But he's got to fire up his base to get them excited about all the stuff that they should be excited about. And one thing they might be excited about if they're, <laughs> I, this transition is so tough, is if they ever rented a bird scooter. Oh, you mean basically how do you get to a rally? <laughs> yeah. Given that the traffic's so bad, you might yes. want to use a bird scooter. And what's the news about those? Are they, no, lime are the, they're the green ones, right? So what yes. color are bird? They're white and black. The white and black ones, yeah. right? So, yes. so what's the dealio with the scooterios? Well, they're valued at, mm-hmm. they're 2.5 billion with a B dollars. Is this for an IPO? Yes. Yes. Oh, my God. Yeah. All right. The next time somebody talks about the rationality of capitalism and its efficient yeah. use of resources, just just give me that one again, will you? But, Mark, I think that you and I are like, we should went totally the wrong professions. Like, why didn't we just put scooters out there on the street with like a GPS and you can rent them and scoot everywhere you want? Like, I know what I'm going to do. Puppies. Know. I'm going to just get puppies and put GPSs on them and let them loose in the street. You can basically have it for a few hours and then you can leave it. Yeah. And, and then what do you do the with the dogs? the same business model. Well, then you don't have to feed it. You don't have to pick yeah. up the shit. Oh, that's shit, a good point. Right? right. Then you basically, you and just, you, can, you can vary your puppy every day. And you just leave it at and the, you just wherever leave it there, you want. And then a van comes past and picks yeah. them up. But here's my question about valuations like that. Isn't it totally fake? I mean, how, I mean, the bird scooter is made to last about 10 minutes, right? I mean, I don't know if we spoke about this. Did we talk about uh, the Uber IPO the last time we did this? We must have, yeah. We must have. If you get the, so one of the few times in the United States that financially, financial companies and, and, and so on actually are forced to tell the truth is in IPO documents. And if you have a look at the Uber IPO, it actually contains the following line. This company may never make any money. (laughs) And that was 40 billion. So two and a half billion for a bunch of scooters that are basically doing a kind of dump it here and then get knocked down in traffic because you're an arsehole on a scooter. I mean, you know, why is that number two and a half billion? My puppies should be seven billion, at least seven And the puppies will last longer than 18 months, I feel like. Well, the thing is they're puppies, right? So you can only actually have them for five or six months. Yeah, but then they become dogs and that can be your, like, you know, your emotional safety. Then it could be emotional support, right? Support, not safety, yes. My God, it's perfect. Well, actually on this line, the um, Facebook, the... um, the Securities Commission came out with the fine for Facebook. And I know this is a common theme in our podcast, but it's a $5 billion worth of fines. Mm-hmm. Uh, this to relates Facebook. to the Cambridge Analytica yes, scandal yeah, and the 58 yeah. million user yeah. data files and all the Does rest Facebook of it. Does Facebook just write a check to the government? How did, or they do the I cash think they app? Do. No, I think actually t- they've probably got $5 billion lying around the back of Mark's sofa okay, in so. spare change. <laughs> they just like look around the back of the sofa, hand it over and say, please go away, annoying yeah. regulator person. We're changing the world do they does this doesn't really dent facebook at, not all. at all i mean it's just bad pr it's, it's not even bad pr they don't care i yeah. mean think think about what they're doing they're trying to basically bring the, their entire platform private so yeah the, here's what i think about this when they started to regulate hedge funds a little bit more after the financial crisis some of the really big funds soros's for example went private mm-hmm. so i'm no longer taking in other people's money i'm just managing the fund for the sake of the fund so essentially you can kind of analogize this to facebook they're going to take the thing private which basically means you're in you're part of the club and it's a closed thing mm-hmm. and stuff everybody else and stuff the regulators and everyone else and then stage two of this is of course libra libra let's crypto. have our own currency now you know we could do an entire pre- you know an entire podcast on this but essentially there's a reason companies don't issue currency and countries do countries have the intergenerational capacity to tax countries uh, are backed uh, up by militaries yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, countries have credible claims to physical resources yeah and if you want to swap all your dollars for basically a crypto that's tied to the dollar so that you can use it instead of dollars in a company that's priced in dollars on yeah. the stock market <laughs> let me know why that's a good idea 
But doesn't this also mean that Facebook is going to sell something that I want to buy in my crypto? So they're going to sell me coffee or, I don't know, like Pepto-Bismol or something? But if they go closed, they might say, okay, if you want to use this from now on, because yeah. we've got you, you're kind of legacy yeah. customers, right? Grandma, you want to keep sharing the pictures? Now yeah. what you got to do is you got to buy at least $100 worth oh, of I see. Libras. Okay. And that's the only way you can play in the site. And whether right. I actually end up using it, they don't care because they've got they my hundred bucks. Right, right, exactly. That's how they. And okay. you know, and if you huh. do, and their ambition to bank the unbanked globally, yeah. and God help us, right? I mean, yes, there are some rotten countries out there with rotten fiscal capacities and terribly volatile currencies, um, and maybe then a, a digital a crypto might be an attractive thing. And, and Facebook's probably better than the government of X, yeah. right? Shall we say, right? I mean, Venezuela and Bolivars versus cryptos at this point. You know, I, I might even go for the cryptos, <laughs> right? So if that's the case, you can imagine. That that they might have an appeal. But then basically what you're doing is trying to be lender of last resort, liquidity provider, unit yeah. of account, unit of exchange, all that big grown up stuff. Yeah. And it's the adjunct oh, of a platform for yeah. shoving picks around. Yeah. Ooh, that's not good. I mean, so the Winklevoss is from Facebook. They have their thing called uh, Gemini. No, wait, Facebook's Libra. Yeah. And so they have Gemini. That's ah. their crypto. So using all the signs from the Zodiac. But can, I have, can, can we issue one called Cancer? Yes. <laughs> You go dark fast. I do, don't I? Um, but their whole social platform is that, of course, they're giving banking and access to financial services to the unbanked. But your point is, let's do the grown-up stuff and actually fix the stru the financial structure of fill-in-the-blank country yeah. instead of just trying to circumvent it with a bunch of like right. smoke and mirrors. Smoke yeah. and mirrors, Jeez. absolutely. I mean, um, how do you? Yeah. I mean, if if you do go this route, right? So imagine you're in, you know whatever bad country x right how does how, how does having this currency this thing help you buy a pint of milk uh, yeah it's so confusing because I mean, it's, it's at not the end of the day the, the only question you should ever ask for a currency right yeah. you know, think of it should scotland have its own currency after yeah. independence right why would anybody want this yeah and if you can't answer the question, why would anybody want this? It's not going to work. Yeah. Well, even in countries where they want it, the dollar still works. I right. mean, so many countries are like, they want the dollar yeah, bills exactly. and they want their own. So we're going to swap yeah. dollars for something that's backed by dollars that isn't a dollar. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Seems at odds with each other. Exactly. Um, what how did you going on? survive the heat wave over the weekend? What did you do? I, so I went to Little Compton where it was 20 degrees oh, cooler. Oh, that sounds so lovely. Which really was. It was I mean, it was still hot, but yeah. you'd, I mean, they just get near the shore. Right? Yeah. And then on Sunday, I went to the beach uh -huh. and I made sure that, uh, you know, my, my loved ones were covered yes. in SPF sweater. Yeah. And then I borrowed someone else's and it turned out it was SPF minus five. <laughs> So you can't actually see. see it, but from my neck to yeah. my navel, I am the color of a no. boiled lobster. Oh, no. Yeah, it's just, it was brutal. Painful. But uh, anyway, so I survived. Yeah. Um, Europe's not. Europe's now yeah. in the grip of its second uh, heat wave. Records are tumbling everywhere. We're yes, about to start the incredible. California, oh my God, everything's burning season. Yeah. And the and hurricane season coming up. And the uh, hurricane yep. season coming up. Yep. So, I mean, this is, you know, again, our friend Global Warming, yeah. right? I mean, you know, it's not real. It's a hoax. All right, well, what's one of the things we're pretty sure that we can say about this is that the distribution of events is going to become more skewed. What does that mean? It means that the events that happen in the tail of the distribution will become more frequent. Yeah. They will move out of the tail. So you will have more heat waves that will be more intense. You will have more hurricanes yep. that will be more intense, et cetera, et cetera. And that seems to be exactly what we're seeing. Now, the big problem for this in Europe is they don't actually have enough it, AC. Yeah. But I actually think that's good, right? Be, so I went, you went to the shore, I went to New York City where it's 70 degrees hotter than yeah, it is anywhere right. else. It's actually 210 yes. Celsius, right? But I was thinking about it, of course, as you walk down, you see all the window units that they're actually making everything hotter. And I understand if, like we need air, all the stuff, but actually we didn't have them. It'd be slightly cooler, right? And our bodies do adjust. So maybe the Europeans are onto something. But here's the thing. You've got all these old people because yes. you're very old, yeah. right? Yes. So they're, they're health vulnerable, right? Yeah. And so how do you get more AC? You burn more fossil fuels to yeah. make the electricity to run them. Yeah. I mean, it's just like, oh, God, really? I know. And it just is never, we we really can't escape it. It'd be, we need to. Yes, we, we really do. So, but a, a less interesting little anecdote as well. So you know how New York City had a blackout? Was it, yes. two, weeks, was it two weeks ago? Two weeks ago, I think, So yeah. I was staying at a hotel south of Central Park what when did it you all guys went do? down. Yeah, so basically I was with the family and uh, we have a visitor in from Europe and we're walking around Central Park. Yeah. And we're going to go to this local pizza joint on, on 5th or 6th and uh, it turned all the lights out. And the sirens. I mean, there's are going. no street lights. There's nothing. no street lights, and of course, I'm like, oh, I know what this is. This is a blackout. So we go to our hotel, 
And it shows you the utter helplessness of mankind. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, the only people in this hotel are basically tourists, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And let's say that most of the tourists that, you know, you'll find wandering around New York City, yeah. they're not in great physical shape, yes, right? Yes, yep. And their ability to climb stairs when AC is on is limited at best. So if you have a 50-story hotel oh, Lord. and the elevators are out, you just end up with a thousand in people crowded into yeah. the lobby, like literally yeah. like beached whales. Yeah. We had to basically step over all these people to get to the back stairs. Yeah. Now we were on the seventh floor, so like iPhones yeah. up, boom, pack right. the bags, get out yeah. and go. And we went and stayed with a friend, right? But I mean, I was just thinking about, you know, take this as a metaphor for mankind. Yes. What happens if we get a really systemic power failure? Well, and what's interesting is ComEd hasn't hasn't said why. But they're like, oh, it's just an allergy somewhere. But they've never actually said. I think it was a tran- it was meant to be a transformer fire. I don't know if oh, that was okay. confirmed. But okay. the reason you get this stuff is because we don't spend any money on infrastructure. I know, I know. So even yeah. if you solve the input energy problem, right, right you're not upgrading the grid. Yeah. And because of that, with these hotter spikes, you're yep. just going to get more and more of this stuff, yep. which well, is why I'm buying a backup generator for the oh, house. Yeah. And then you probably have a, um, a power room. off the gas. You have the room, the panic room in the basement too. No, I've got a music room. Oh, we okay. could turn that into a panic room. Well, we'll call it panic attack. at the disco. Yeah, panic at the, so, but I mean, it's dark. The entire island of Manhattan is dark, right? Because there's no light. It wasn't entire. It was basically a big, a big wallop of it from Chelsea and 14th Street up to oh, Central Park okay. and a bit of the Upper West Side. But that's just, I mean, because you're never in a city where there's not some light coming from. You somewhere. want a spooky thing? It was exactly 40 years to the day from the big blackout from the big when that wind. happened. Holy cow. Yeah. Yeah. Nuts, huh? Wow. The universe really giving us. So anyway, message. Europe, and it's not even August yet. So they had a huge heat wave that broke all the records in June. Yep. Uh, they had the hottest June ever. We're about to have the hottest July ever. We'll have the hottest August ever. Yeah. I'm sure there'll be another one. Yeah. John's sitting here. He's going to Portugal. He's probably going to like turn into bacon while he's there. Right. So, you know. But then we'll have crazy cold winter, right? We'll have a it'll crazy cold the, winter. It'll be your tail. The extremes, yep. exactly. Yep. Oh, well. Uh, well, let's end on something happy. And that yes. is the World Cup. Because the US not just women, any World Cup, no, like the U.S. women, play. I mean, they were amazing and incredible and win the World Cup. How dare you beat the lionesses? I know. You horrible people by being much better than everyone else. It's so unfair. Well, what was interesting is for me, in stark contrast to the men, like the teams, the, the Swedish women's team looked like they were all, there were no immigrants on that. There was, no, there was one person who oh, was not was. Okay. tall, blonde and white. Yeah. And I think she was on the bench. Oh, jeez. But it was an exercise and yeah. like, oh, I guess they're the Swedes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, well, of course, I mean, the big... I mean, does the American team, the team that was on the field, look particularly diverse? They were. There's, there are, I think there were two or three African-American women. I think the listeners would probably let me know if there's more. And there was a... There, they are fairly diverse in terms right. of soccer, knowing that soccer isn't particularly diverse. But, um, of course, you know, the policy behind it, behind the win or the win, the policy that many of the women are talking about and that they sued was about pay equity. Exactly. That's and the big one. And they didn't back down. And no, that's what absolutely. I thought was pretty... So where does this go? I mean, are they getting a pay equity? I mean, is it, is it still sort of out, out with the jury as well? Yeah, what? I think it's still out with the jury, and that is being uh, running is going through the legal system because mm-hmm. they sued the uh, the the body that runs women's soccer. Um, of course, you have to love Megan Rapino or not. You don't or not right exactly. or actually not like her at all as the president. But she's such a spokesperson for the team and for pay equity, and also just for not allow. I mean, they've really kept the conversation on this one thing, mm-hmm. and to not uh, yes celebrate. But really, with an eye towards making sure that they're that they're paid the same amount. As the no, men. absolutely. As well, they yeah. should be. I mean, the professional athletes. I mean, yeah. this is. There was, I read something recently about uh, the Brazilian women's national team basically being stuck on the floor of a hotel because the credit card to pay their rooms, oh, you know, wouldn't yeah. work or something like. That. I mean, it's just ridiculous, and it's it's such second class status. But you know, these are global events. You're yes. getting millions and millions of viewers. Yes. Advertisers involved. That means there's tons of money being made. Yep. So it's all going into FIFA's back pocket once again and just right off bat that is totally yes. ridiculous I mean this is I mean this encompasses so many uh, so many different sports but you think about the jerseys they're selling yeah, their names on totally, the back and all absolutely. that sort of stuff yeah um, so what else is pause. going on for the summer then what can we look forward to 
We're oh. recording this the, towards the end of July. Yeah. So what's oh, going on? Well, I mean, you'll really like this. We have more Democratic debates. Oh, Big God. D Democratic Save debates. Save me. <laughs> coming Save up at the me. end of the month. Is this... my dog Lucy a, a part of it yet? Does she got her own debate? I, not yet, but maybe in September. The maybe 75 September. people okay. running. Right. There'll be uh, 17 nights of debates um, with three tiers. And then, you know, they'll push the button and the floor will fall out. And That'd someone just will be fall. awesome. Yeah. But it's actually the same, almost the same setup as the first debates in terms of Warren and Sanders, I think, are together one night, and uh, um, Kamala and Joe Biden are together is the Biden's next night. Is so. campaign going anywhere? I, is he still running? That's a, that's the thing, isn't uh, yeah. it? I mean, it's really, it's kind of like, hey, Biden stepped into the ring and disappeared. Yeah, and then just quiet quiet yeah it's sort of, it's like a stealth campaign or it's like he's just like i mean I, total expectations of winning and right. doesn't and think that he has to why spend any to do time and energy on it just now it'll be interesting to see if he comes out with some pointed stuff towards her at all or yeah. whether he just kind of sits back again but anyway round a billion of the 10 what would be hilarious debates. if he actually just came out honestly and said look i'm not going to actually debate with you about this here's the deal right yeah um you are a woman of color and for that reason, millions of white American men will never vote for you, whereas they will vote for me. We're done. Or he, and then he said, "Have you just said that, right?" I mean, it would be, be, it would be like, you know, what would you do with that? I refuse to talk about issues, whatever. This is all about defeating Trump, yeah. and to defeat Trump, you need to get at least some white guys on your side. Yeah. And then we could make into reality TV show, and he says, "Will you be my vice president?" And bends down on one knee. Ooh, yeah, I, I mean, like just to it. add a twist I like to that, it. but right to add this dose, but but, but add this yeah. dose of reality to it. Which well, exactly, is just this, this point yeah. of like, you know, well, you know, it's a, in a sense the stealth race conversation amongst yes. the Democrats, right? Yeah. Why is Joe there? Because he's a seventy-year-old white dude. Right. That's it. That's the right. only reason, right? So why not actually bring that out into the open and say, yeah. like, if that's the only thing you've got, yeah, right? You know, uh, let's talk about it. Well, and do the candidates of color either get mobilized the Republicans to turn out or do they mobile, put the Obama coalition together to turn out? Of course, that's the million dollar question that nobody, well, exactly. that nobody knows. Um, I mean, that's on this side of the ocean. Is there, I mean, Boris Johnson will be sworn in and his hair. Yeah, I mean, so, you know, there is a chance he could call ele snap elections as well, oh, yeah. right? So you could do that because, you know, Jeremy's making such a hash of it in terms of the single-minded focus on making him do a hard Brexit. So that could derail things. So you could have an early British election. But usually Europe shuts down for August. Yeah. I mean, one of the most annoying things about being an academic researcher who works a lot in Europe and on yeah. Europe is that if I want to talk to hmm. anyone in Europe, like... If I don't do it literally by about the 21st of July, Nothing. forget about it. Yeah. You're not getting anybody until the 16th yeah. of September. Whoa. They're gone. Right, absolutely. And like all of it. I mean, you know, because they yeah. believe in this thing called vacation. It's so much healthier. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. it's bloody annoying if you're trying to get a hold of anyone. But the great yeah. thing about it is, I mean, it's about like, you know, my favorite example is Belgium and the financial crisis. So Belgium's debt to GDP ratio was second only to Greece or something, or maybe it was Italy at that point in time. And uh, they didn't suffer any of the calls from Fitch or Standard Poor's mm -hmm. and that sort of stuff. And why not? It's because they didn't have a government. <laughs> like they were it's, unable to form a government yeah. for 18 months so there was literally yeah. no one around to screw it up yeah. so you know there's a nice thing when everybody goes on holiday yeah. you can't screw things up that much well no I like the idea that there's because there's no one there, nothing, and it can just kind of run. Exactly. So imagine you basically yeah. you get the federal government workers to do yes. their stuff, right? Yes. They do the paychecks, they do yep. social security, whatever, right? And you don't shut down the government. You just shut down Congress. I mean, it shows that the politics are what gums up the entire system. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, well, so there's a nice anti-democratic yes. note to end on, <laughs> yes. on news. I don't know how we got there. I but don't know are. how we did, but I like it. So it's this is Carrie and Mark from the yes. new fascist party. <laughs> yes. Um, I wish we could have put a different brand on that, the new, you know. Yeah, I know, exactly. Like the new puppy love party or The something. new puppy love. Come for yeah. us, our GPS puppies. Yes. Coming out. We're rolling Digi out Providence I know first. I'm calling it Digital Cuddles. Oh, <laughs> It's, admit it, it's good. It's it so good. It is good. The app is going to be awesome. The app's going to, exactly. Get your woof. Yeah. <laughs> with a little paw print. Oh. <laughs> call us with the investors, please. Investors, call us. please, yeah. you know where yeah. to find us. Yeah, exactly. Let's go. Well, thank you. Have a great rest of your summer. Uh, thank you all for listening. We'll be back in the fall. Mm -hmm.